Well, good morning, boys and girls. BP back here. So, in this new fence line that we put in, back there, like in the spring, and I showed you guys, it was like a four-part series on how to build a four-wire fence yourself. Um, with our gate that we have down here, get that off there. The gate that was already here, which is this one right here, and see this gateway right here, and it's kind of a long gateway. I did not put a post tie on this side. On this side, we just have a rope, which works, but this po rope is getting kind of old. And if a cow or some animal comes along and rubs on it, they could rub that rope and get it open. Like, if the rope breaks, this gate could end up being open, right? Back that up a bit. She's not the greatest of ropes in the world, but hey, it's still working. So my cure to this problem, I got some short wire here, see that? We're basically just gonna put a safety wire my wife always likes to have one in the middle, which is a pain in the ass when you're op in a hurry to open and close the gate, and then put another one on top that can drop over top. So we got a couple of wires, small wires, and uh, we're going to get these safety wires put on this gate. So I'll bring you back when uh, I get this wrapped up. Alrighty, guys. So just about didn't bring you back. I had a phone call and... I was thinking, okay, let's get the hell home. So all I do for a safety is I got this guy on here, which you can lift right off of the post, but he'll stay on there. And I put this one on here with just a single wrap, just as added, added precaution. How's that sound? This one down here. And then this up here, which, like I said, we can lift him. Back that up a bit too close we can lift this off the post if i if i need to right for opening and closing the gate which you would have to in this situation the barbs are catching in the post a little bit right there but that's no biggie so this gate is now secured to the point where i don't feel worried that the uh, cows are going to get out if they rub on it how's that sound and She's still, oh yeah, it's not moving much, right? When your top wire and you push down on it, can't touch the next wire down, you got yourself a good, solid, tight fence. Mm, so, yahoo, that's the way you gotta have them, guys. At least in my eyes, that's the way you gotta have them. Anyway. Let's get our butts back home. We got grandkids coming out today. And uh, for a little bit. And I was bad. I did not blow all the chaff and shit off of our round baler. When we were done baling hay the other day. Last week, whatever the hell that was. So I gotta clean him off. I'm gonna grease him all up. And I'm gonna take Big Blue and hook him up to a hay bind and grease the hay binds all up. Cause we're getting real close to hitting the sloughs in all the fields in, in the neighborhood. How's that sound? Harvest is on, so I'll be able to get into the fields to do the sloughs up. Anyways, we'll talk to you then. Okay, so we're back home in the yard. What the hell? Friggin' piece of wood. God damn it. So we're gonna blow this all off back here. We're gonna get in here. And we're gonna blow a shitload of stuff out of here. Up on top, there's not very much, but a little bit. We'll blow that all out. So let's get our blower up and running and 
get to work. There, that looks a little better, eh? How about that, eh? She looks a lot cleaner now. Just blowing it all off like that. Um, let me think here. It's been a while since I've done this. But for some people that don't know, these arms down here, that's the tie arm for the right side. And there's another one on the left side. When they release, they break, go down to the center, and then work their way back out. You can adjust those arms, and lots of it, if you have an auto tie system, or command, bail command, like this one, is done off of right here. This arm right here is your adjustment arm. And you need those arms pulled all the way up, just like that. You can't, there should be just a little bit of play right there, see? You can see that moving just a little bit. So on the very end of the arm, it'll move about two inches, okay? And that all is activated on this particular machine through here and here. And so, and then your knife adjustment, you tighten and loosen your knife adjustment, left side, right side, right here with this and this and so so mr klein that's where you want to adjust that arm and if you can't adjust it enough well maybe you've got a bent arm right there um or maybe you've got a buggered gear because these work off of like a gear underneath let me get underneath here they work together underneath in here okay so if you've got a if this gear is not positioned just right or if this spring is not tight enough then those arms won't pull up high enough out of place so when the knife is locked down when it's tying and it tied that knife should stay down tight on the twine and generally it'll hold the twine the whole time that way your twine's not dangling in the ground. See that one? It's tied in there. You can see the twine is locked in there. And it's locked in there right there. And so I've seen and I've heard where these gears don't mesh. And they're out of alignment. And then the twine arms don't pull up high enough. And so on and so forth. Anyway. She's all cleaned up. We're going to park this sucker and then uh, actually I'll do a quick greasing on it and then I'll park it and then we'll hook up to a hay bind and get ready for slews. Talk to you guys later. Well guys, what's that look like? I'm standing up in the top of the round baler. Let's see if I can move without falling here. Just hang on. Bear with me boys. And girls, because that's one place you don't want to fall. Okay, here we go. We're safer now. So, we're servicing the BR-780. Take the gloves off so I can show you what's going on. And... I had it running and I was doing a full grease as it ran. That way the grease gets into the bearings really good. And it was making some funny noise. Checked all the bearings out. Everything's good. No issues. So that only means one thing left. If it's not a bearing that can be accessed externally, it has to be accessed internally. So this thing right here, this big arm right from top all the way down to that bottom roller right there which isn't even at the bottom but just at the bottom of that roll so that's the bottom oh let me think here pickup pressure pickup roll that's the bottom pressure pickup roll is what that's called right there so that one's good top pressure pickup roll is this one the next one up right there 
bearing on that side is kafuid. So yeah, not a good thing to have happen at this point by any means. So throw the gloves down. Now I'm gonna crawl down. Oh my God. Ugh. Now in order to do this, it's a bit of an ugly job. You gotta undo all the belts on the whole machine. And so now all the belts are undone and out of the way. You uh, gotta undo the hydraulic pressure cylinder and they said you gotta undo the springs or back the springs off as much as possible if I can back them off. They're probably rusted in there to no end. So we gotta, oh, he's tight, son of a bitch. I'll have to get a hammer and tap that lock back release all the pressure on this hydraulic cylinder so that's the hydraulic connected to the hydraulic pressure rolls which is uh way up there and it's also connected to this big long spring right here and that is we have to release the pressure on all of that to uh release the pressure on that roller so it doesn't fly out of place and then we open the tailgate and then we can get to the bolts that hold those bearings in place. Ain't that just a son of a bitch? And so, and if you can't get it at that point, then you actually gotta lift that whole assembly completely out of there. So kind of an ugly job we got up against us here, guys, but we'll attack it and we'll make it happen. Talk to you guys later. My God, that looks terrible, don't it? Ugh. Anyway, got all the belts completely out of the way. So to release the pressure, ah, let me grab my tool. Okay, here, to re, there. This is your lock. And this is your hydraulic pressure system this is how when it's all the way cranked in that's applying pressure and you turn it all the way out till it stops and in my case i'm putting the lock on there so nobody happens to bump it there so the pressure on the hydraulic cylinder is completely loose and relaxed at this point so now what they are telling me the easiest way is to get a sling or a strap and connect it onto this bottom roller right here of the pickup roll pressure roll connect it on there and tie it up either to the top somewhere or to a front end loader to hold it in place right there and then when i open my tailgate i should be able to open the tailgate enough to uh hold that or better yet, undo the bolts with that right in that position. We're hoping, guys. Otherwise, if we can't, then we're gonna have to release, undo these bolts. And chances are, those bolts are not gonna wanna move at all. Cause they've probably been in there for how many friggin' years? Oh yes, I gotta undo the hydraulic cylinder from there too, and so. Anyway, fun, fun, fun. Let's get at her. Alrighty, guys. So, here's what we done. We were backed up over there. You can see all the belts on the floor, ground. And then you gotta get a strap, which I had this strap right here, hooked to that roller right there. Because that's always under pressure. I did not release any tension off of these springs, okay? And I took that strap and I tied it to the grapple of the other tractor and I pulled up and I got the brake off, which is right here. And then I let it down and it was just by pure luck, fluke. You see that pin right up there? 
there you can kind of see that pin in there that's coming out and then the hydraulic cylinder is wedged between the pin and that other arm right there well that's part of the pressure assembly and lo and behold that put me right where I needed to be with the tailgate locked open the way it is right now. So I was able to get that bolt out and the bolt out on the other side and the roller is in the shop. I got to grab some gloves to uh, pull it apart. Babe, make sure these kids do not go inside there. wouldn't be much of a cage because they'd be able to crawl out the back end there's nothing here <laughs> even with it closed <laughs> the belts are all on the ground <laughs> can't even use the round baler as a cage to put the kids in so so there's the the roller and uh, we got to pull that sucker out of there and if you guys look you can see that that bearing is hooched in there so since I have it out we're gonna replace both because you can be guaranteed it won't be long and I'll be doing this all over again pulling that one apart back in a bit alrighty guys so there should be bearings are all out this is part of a bearing this is the other bearing and he's actually still good still a good bearing and I'll hang on to him but the bearing itself is 70 bucks and then this plate right here that's pressed inside of it right there that friggin plate is another 70 bucks and I just decided because of the situation I'm gonna put new one on both sides and be done with it and so but I'll hang on to that one just in case the new bearings are on their way uh, our daughter is in uh, Regina and she's gonna stop at Mazer Group New Holland and get us new bearings for this sucker and then I could start putting it back together. What a pain in the royal arse this thing is. And so, got my hydraulic cylinder out of that spot where it was wedged. So now the pressure arm, pressure arm right there is sitting on that pin, that welded in pin on the side right there. If you guys can see that. There you go. So it's sitting right there. And then you open your tailgate, that way you can get to all of these guys. Of course you gotta lock your tailgate, but this one is good. And the other one was bad, simple as that, right? So we'll get the new one here and then we'll work at putting everything back together and. We should be good to go. I'll bring you guys back when we're all done putting it together, whether that happens today or not. I I was say. Going too fast. I can't walk that fast, old man. I thought it was too Got the kids out here. Oh, here comes Fatso. <laughs> That's why he's going fast, because there's Fatso, right? Here comes Tucker. Hey, Tucker. You're not herd bound at all. <laughs> He's okay once you he get him going. Fat dimples is my horse. He's like the owners. <laughs> He's keeping, He's keeping our tail. You went off line. You're fine. We're going back. He's keeping our tail, mommy. Mm-hmm. He kind of looks like spirit, doesn't he? Yeah. Hey. 
I figured he was gonna try and be an ass. Alrighty guys, so here we are. All new bearings, both sides, new bolts, new housings, blah blah blah. The roller's in there, it's locked into position. Tristan was awesome, he came out and helped me get it all in place with the wife. So now we just got the fun job of reinstalling this jumbled up mess of belt. And so, I'm gonna get at her. And when she's all completed, I'll bring you guys back. Alrighty. Well, all the belts are back in her, finally. It's like friggin' 7.30 at night. But it takes a bit crawling up and down, up and down, all around and relacing everything. She sounds a little squawky. But that's because I got a couple of blown up pickup teeth in there. But other than that, she's ready to rock and roll. Everything is looking good in here now. Anyway guys, that, give us the old thumbs up, comment, subscribe, we'll catch you tomorrow.